Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be talking about DOS attacks and how you can actually deny wireless access to pretty much anybody within the range of your wireless card. Now your current range of your wireless card is not your permanent range or probably it's not your maximum range because you can boost the signal as well. But of that I shall speak a bit later on for the time being. I wish to focus only on the actual DOS attack as that can, well, not only can you deny the service, but as I stated in the previous tutorial, you, can, you are actually able to trick a user into resetting the router, primarily because if you can't connect to your wireless, what is one of the first things that you do? You basically just reset the router. Even if you call the ISP provider, one of the first things that they will tell you is reset the router. And these sort of attacks, they don't, unless they are going over an extended period of time or something like that, they don't raise a lot of suspicion. I mean, most people, when they can't connect to wireless in their houses or something like that, oh well, reset the router, if it works out, great, if it doesn't, oh well, call the ISP, then they try to fix it, but you're not going to be running the DOS attack probably for that long. Your idea is to force a reset, however, you can run actually permanent DOS attacks and in such a way deny service to a certain user or company or something of a kind. There is no known way to actually stop this. Uh, you, there are, as I've stated in the previous tutorials as well, you can use some paint or that doesn't, that doesn't allow signals to pass through, or you can use some tin foil or something like that on the walls, but you are effectively uh, limiting what you can do with your own wireless in such a way, and that's not really the best of solutions. Anyway, uh, there are certain things that a user can do on the other side to mediate the sort of an attack, such as change the channel of, your, of their wireless access point, change the MAC address, but none of those things are actually stopping the DOS attacks. All of those things, they are sim all that they are doing is simply hiding and buying for time. All you need to do is simply follow up uh, on the changes, for example, uh, do a scan again if you see that there is something wrong and that's it. You will find a new MAC address, you will find a new channel and you will see the, ES the new ESS ID as well. So anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and perform this sort of attack, see what happens and how can we actually confirm it. Anyway, the first thing that we need to do is uh, set our wireless network card into monitor mode. I have a small script that I have written for myself here. I have explained it in the previous tutorials. If you're just wondering why am I not doing this uh, via airmon-ng, so airmon-ng, and you can also do it like this, vlp 2 s 0 Well, uh, I've discovered that on Fedora, the distribution that I'm using at the moment, and uh, the one that I'm using for the demonstration of this tutorial, well, it just presents problems. I mean, uh, it creates virtual interfaces and, I don't know, you get an error like name not unique on the network and there's a way to fix that or work around something like that, but I've just written my own script and, that I'm going to use. You can use it as well. I've shown it in the previous tutorial. All it does is bring the interface, wireless interface down, changes its state, uh, changes the changes the state changes the mode to monitor mode and then changes the state back to up again here we can just see it one more time quickly excellent perhaps I should have add a Mac change here as well that would be uh, that would be actually a good idea but for the time being I'm not gonna do that primarily because there is no need to hide as I'm doing this to my own wireless system however if you're doing this outside definitely use Mac changer dash r vlp to s zero you can only apply you can only change the mac address when the interface is down you cannot change the mac address of the interface that is up how to do this i have shown in the previous tutorials as well anyway let's just go ahead and clear the screen i usually run this command airmon da airmon dash ng check vlp to s zero I use this uh, not to initiate the monitor, not to set the monitor mode, but rather instead to perform a checkup to see if there are any programs, any processes out there within my computer that might cause problems or interference. Apparently there are none. If there were, once you run this command, it would give you the PIDs of the processes and uh, you could kill them easily. No problems there. 
Uh, let's just go ahead and clear the screen. And the tool that we need to use as part of the aircraft package here is AI replay. So before we actually start doing that, we will of course need to perform a scan with a tool that we have used previously. So air dump, I have no idea why they call it. So air dump dash ng uh, VLP 2S0 press enter. Oops, aero dump. It's aero dump, sorry. I always make a mistake there, but you can just use tab as I've shown and it's gonna work out well for you. So apparently I have some open access points here as well. And I have noticed a very strange thing. When I do, when I perform these scans during different times of day, uh, the signal strength varies and the amount of wireless access point also changes. I'm just gonna stop this because there are too many of them now. Uh, the wireless access point, the amount of wireless access point changes and the signal strength changes. What I've noticed that people are doing is that they actually turn their Wi-Fi's off during certain times of the day when they are not there or when they are not using it or something of a kind. And that is a very wise precaution. I mean, that is a very, that's a very intelligent thing to do because uh, if there is nobody in your house, if there is nobody using your Wi-Fi, there is literally no reason for you to leave it online. Just pull the plug. Simple as that. Uh, you increase the safety of your wireless, of your home network exponentially. Primarily because not only are you invisible, permanently invisible during certain periods of time, but you are also uh, effectively limiting windows of opportunity for anybody to attack you. And that can cause a ridiculous amount of problems to an attacker. Anyway, so over here I have my wireless interface, it's called something. Uh, it's on channel 6 and it's power, it's relatively good, but look at my neighbors. I did this, I conducted this scan last night and my own wireless was about 50 something and my neighbors was 59, which was ridiculous. I, I'm guessing this guy is right next to me or right below me with a uh, with an antenna attached to the ceiling or something of a kind. I have no idea, but he's getting like a really strong wireless signal. I'm gonna have to ask him around to see who this is just to see what the just to see what the signal strength is on this router. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's just use uh, let's just use the AI replay. However, in you can't I didn't find a way to actually specify a channel in AI replay. I'm, Perhaps there is an option there or something of a kind, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I didn't try too hard. What I want to show you is that you can actually change the channel of your wireless inter network card manually. So just type in IV. Wait, before we actually do that, let's just try a random scan and see what happens. So AI replay dash NG. And here we're gonna need to specify dash zero. So dash zero is one of the lists is from the list of arguments that I do believe that I showed previously, but doesn't really matter. So you see in the help menu, you have the authentication, you can use dash zero instead of that. Fake authentication, you can use dash one instead of that, and so on and so forth. You don't actually need to type in the whole command, rather instead you can, they've enumerated them, so it's a lot easier to actually use. Anyway, we're gonna say dash zero and space, it says count. So how many the authentication uh, the authentication request you want to send, you can specify a number, it can be a very large number here, or you can just say one for a single deauthentication for capturing the uh, WPA2 handshakes, well you're probably going to need more than one, but doesn't really matter, I usually have a tendency to place a zero here, zero tells it simply do it continuously. So you can just do it until you feel satisfied or until you've achieved your purpose and then control C to actually cancel it. No big deal there. Anyway, after that, we need to specify a dash A option, which is the BSID. And then in addition to that, we need to specify the interface that we're going to be using. Press enter and there we go. So it says here on channel three, but I know for a fact and you can scroll up, you can see here something, it says channel it's channel 6. So this is not gonna work, it says no such BSSID available, please specify ESSID, so the name, perhaps the name of the network. Yeah, that is due to this channel problem. 
So this is channel 3 and my wireless interface card is functioning on, my, my wireless access point is actually functioning on channel 6 while my wireless network card is functioning on channel 3 in my laptop. What we need to do is manually configure the channel of our network card. So IV, IW, sorry, config VLP2S0, which is the name of our interface, and then channel, and then just say 6. So it's very simple, it's like English language. You have you have a command, so iwconfig, the name of your wireless interface, just type in the argument that you want to change, which is channel, same thing with mod, with mode, so just type in mod here and change it to whatever you want. But in this case, we're changing the channel, so just type in channel, space, and then just type in the number of the channel you wish to tune it, you wish to change it to. Anyway, now our wireless network card is running, is operating on channel 6 and if we repeat the command that I have previously shown you will see immediately immediately it actually passes this attack is more effective than targeting a connected world yep okay so there is a there is a there is this message that we're being displayed here this is not an error message this is just a note of a sort we can also deauthenticate individual clients on the network so we don't need to see this attack that I'm performing now this will deauthenticate everyone on that wireless card, on that wireless access point. Everybody will be deauthenticated. I mean, you can confirm this by uh, using your smartphone or tablet or another PC that is connected to the wireless to your home wireless network, and it might show the status that it is still connected. But try browsing the net. Try opening up a website or something of a kind. You will not be able to do it. Like not in a million years. Also, there are some Mac filtering options that routers tend to impose, but doesn't matter. I've shown you how you can change a Mac address, and you can also set a script which will rotate your Mac addresses periodically, so that, that can be a nightmare. Uh, also, the routers have the option to like adjust the Mac address to adjust a certain range of MAC addresses which can access it, but again, you will be able to see the authenticated clients on that network and just use their MAC addresses instead and pass through. As I said, this is ridiculously difficult to stop, and it's it's a, it's really painful when you're being DOSed in terms of wireless out. There's very little that you can do. Uh, I honestly don't know of any known method to actually completely stop this, but we'll see there are some there are some enterprise type routers that are actually able to fight this off to an extent but we'll see what the future brings anyway i will be doing more of this in the follow up tutorial and i will show you how you can deauthenticate a single client plus we'll be writing down some bash scripts and see how that works out to improve our attack in any case i bid you farewell and i hope to see you in the next tutorial